As of January the 20th, 1996, a number of UFOs were reported in the skies above central Brazil. Some of them were captured on a home video. Then, in a bizarre twist, reports started emerging that one of these UFOs had actually crashed near the town of Virginia and that the local military had recovered some alien bodies. many in the UFO community, this was the most significant event since the Roswell crash of 1947. We know uh, we have a lot of evidence here, and there is a huge cover-up in Brazil since January 1996. I do believe we were visited by alien creatures who were captured by the militaries. And I want to know what happened to these creatures. I think the whole world wants to know if these creatures are still in Brazil and uh, definitely what happened to them. It's just un unbelievably undeniable, undeniable. Now, it doesn't matter what the military say, they are hiding. They are hiding. They, they do have captured aliens in Brazil alive. According to eyewitness reports, the UFO crashed on the edge of Varginha, a small industrial town in the heart of Brazil. Well, about 2 a.m. in the morning of the January 20th, some satellites from the United States detected an object entering Earth's atmosphere. Of course, it was aiming to Brazil, and they let us know, the American authorities, or American military let Brazilian authorities know that it was aiming to Brazil, so we should keep a, an eye on it. Well, while this object was falling down, it was observed by a few witnesses. It was very strange because some of them could describe an object like a cigar shaped, with a cigar shaped format, like in flame, with some uh, sparkles, things like that. Anyway, at this same morning, about 7.30, some people in the neighboring areas of Virginia started describing a strange creature. Obviously, the creature that survived from the crash. In January the 20th, the fire department captured a creature, a very strange creature. They wrapped this creature in a net and put inside this uh, one by one uh, square meters wood box and gave it straight to the militaries who went there to pick it up. They said it was a terrible smell of ammonia, uh, burning the noses, they couldn't breathe, and it was a very ugly creature. 
One of them told me that he would like to see me in a room for one minute facing such a creature like that because it was so ugly and it had three fingers with um, long and very strong nails. One of the creatures uh, in the military facility scratched one of the tables, wood table. You should see what happened to the table when one of the creatures just scratched it. Well, when they first understood what was going on, they got really astonished because all of a sudden, Brazilian militaries were right in front of an alien being. They, they just got so surprised because they never thought an alien being could be like that. They were really astonished and uh, they were afraid of getting some disease from it. The description of the bodies connected with the Vargina case makes it sound much more like they were cargo than crew. They seem to be woozy, they didn't have any clothes, the little horns, the color of the skin and stuff. Their reactions did not imply particularly high intelligence. Now, who knows, maybe this was a crew from a different place and we don't know what their mental capabilities were or something like that. But you just don't get the feeling looking at the drawings that have been made, the testimony of the witnesses, that we're dealing with particularly sophisticated aliens here. And I can imagine a cargo craft that ran into some kind of a problem. Pilot error is common, apparently, uh, in which these guys were set loose and weren't really the operators of the craft. Clearly something unusual happened, but uh, there are a number of alternatives which do first need to be explored. One possibility is that we need to look at uh, the likelihood that we had some sort of satellite uh, re-entry, space debris coming into the Earth's atmosphere at high level. Clearly we do have some indication that uh, NORAD passed a warning to the Brazilian national authorities that there was indeed some uh, high level event taking place. So that is the first thing that I think uh, UFO researchers and others need to consider here. Any time that you have uh, accounts, particularly if they're uh, of sightings late at night, of bright lights seen very close above the ground, um, a lot of activity going on, uh, what you may be dealing with is the military carrying out some sort of uh, night manoeuvres. Now, you can have military trucks, obviously brightly illuminated with uh, headlights and, and all sorts of other freestanding uh, lights, for example. You could even have um, a low-flying helicopter actually hovering um, very close to the ground or, or um, actually indeed on the ground. And in some meteorological conditions, um, and I'm talking about uh, the wind here, uh, you need not necessarily hear a great deal of noise um, until you get very close to it. According to reports, a combined team of army and firemen removed something or someone from the crash wreckage and then took them to the local hospital. The reaction of the doctors and the nurses was kind of mixed up because some of them thought it could be an alien creature. Others thought it could be some genet genetic experiment and some of them thought it could be the devil's son. The military, some of them who actually took part in the capture proceedings, came to the researchers to tell, I was part of it. I was there. I helped the capture. I helped to hold. I helped to put in the box. I helped to transport. See, we have first-hand witnesses from the military. The local fire station confirmed that they were called out to an incident on January the 20th, but their commander denied that any UFOs or aliens were involved. Ah! 
Gosto que eu sou, eu sou muito. Eu não tenho condições de falar. Primeiro que eu estava de serviço no dia, certo? Quem estava de serviço no dia é o sargento chefiando a equipe, né? Mas que pela informação aí que a gente tem, tanto faz como a imprensa, né? Como até o pessoal perito na área da ufologia, é a mesma que, que eu tenho, que, te, que, que eles têm, né? Mas simplesmente não tá, se trata só do nosso ver, do, de falta assim, de, de prova material, se trata só de boatos. Então é boato para a gente não é lógico, então a gente tem que ver. Com força até profissional, nós não convivemos com boatos, mas porém com a lógica. É só com a lógica que nós somos. Então, se nós não tivermos condições de mostrar para o povo, e não, não capturamos nada, então aí nós fomos centro da atenção porque a pessoa, em geral, pensa que o bombeiro tinha material para transportar, como vocês viram aí, né? É, foi testemunho, nosso recurso para capturar um ser extraterrestre com inteligência extraterrestre é muito escasso. Não, nós tivemos só o período, né? o período que foi o máximo, né? o pessoal é, procurou divulgar, procurou procurar com a gente resposta que a gente não tinha, né? coisas que, que é difícil. Então foi muito interesse que tiveram, porque é uma curiosidade, nós povo brasileiro, nós precisamos de heróis e de fato novo. E surgiu um boato que é um fato novo, como se foi, como foi o chupacabra, né? que foi comédia até hoje, certo? Why do people say that the fire brigade captured an alien on that day? Porque a gente aqui em Barzina, no mundo, dizem que os bombeiros han capturado estas trans criaturas em 6 de eh, eh, janeiro de 1996. Eu acho que é, é simplesmente para sobreviver, ter a cidade como uma atração, que foi uma atração mundial divulgada no mundo inteiro, até que se. É, até serviu de parte contra da televisão. E é uma, uma forma de mostrar a cidade de Varginha para o mundo, criando uma ideia fantasiosa a respeito desse fato. When asked permission to interview the actual fireman who allegedly captured these aliens on the day, the commander says that they were on leave. Some of the gentlemen who performed the capture came to us and gave a full report of what's going on. Now, it's not second-hand report. Those reports came from people who actually helped to capture, to hold the creatures. So this is the best report someone can have. I wish the Americans have a report of someone holding the Roswell creatures back 50 years ago. They don't, but we do about Virginia. One of the witnesses who came forward was a soldier who claimed to have escorted this creature to the hospital. This is a recording of a telephone interview. Eu fazia parte da equipa que foi enviada para guardar o laboratório onde os cientistas estudavam a criatura. Ai, não sei se dizer se estava vivo ou morto, era muito estranho. O nosso comandante estava com medo que, que apanhássemos alguma doença daquela coisa, o cheiro era horrível, parece mesmo como se tivessem urinado. A criatura tinha mais ou menos um metro de altura, a pele era castanha, oleosa e brilhante. Ah, e aqueles olhos vermelhos, os olhos eram incríveis, enormes. Tinha, tinha uma garra esquisita de pulmão. Estive apenas envolvido nisto no hospital. 
enquanto abordasse um laboratório, a equipa médica fazia todo o tipo de testes na criatura, não sei se quer autópsia, se estavam a tentar salvar a vida da criatura. Posso dizer que a, que a equipa médica estava tão nervosa e chocada quanto eu. Basta imaginar o quão, o quão estranho isto foi, sério, inacreditável. No final, os médicos confirmaram que a criatura, entretanto, morreu. Sério, toda esta experiência foi, foi a coisa mais doida que eu já vi. Sei que parece, parece loucura, mas eu estive lá. Aconteceu de verdade e, e vi aquela criatura com os meus olhos. Pessoas de Varginha, no sul de Minas, juram que viram um ser muito estranho. Nem homem. As nem dawn broke on January the 20th, Varginha found itself in the center of a UFO maelstrom. Muita gente acredita que trata-se de um extraterrestre e dizem também que o ser foi capturado pelas autoridades e é mantido escondido em algum well, lugar. Well, the town was just going insane because everybody was on the streets because many UFOs were sighted at that time. So people was just connecting one thing to another. Uh, I'm talking about hundreds, uh, um, thousands of people on the streets and everybody wanted to know, demanding answers. It was a kind of a uh, mass hysteria, I can tell you this. In fact, there were hundreds of reports of UFOs in the skies above Brazil flooding into the authorities. Surge uma novidade importante no caso do extraterrestre que teria aparecido em Varginha, sul de Minas. Uma testemunha militar afirma que a criatura foi mesmo capturada com vida. O Fantástico teve acesso às declarações secretas desse militar. Segundo os pesquisadores que acompanham o caso Varginha, ele sabe o que está dizendo. Mas os pesquisadores acreditam que a grande evidência do caso Varginha é o depoimento de militares que teriam participado das operações de captura e retirada da cidade do suposto ET. The local military base which was involved in this incident was an officer training academy called ESA. When asked about the UFO crash and alien capture, they flatly denied it. But bizarrely, they explained the eyewitness reports of aliens at the hospital as a misidentified dwarf couple. Porque na realidade, é, aparições de extraterrestres ou de ovnis, isso não houve porque não houve uma comprovação. O que ocorreu mesmo foi o seguinte, no dia 20 de janeiro, estava chovendo muito, muito forte em Varginha, correu um temporal. Esses caminhões, esses caminhões Mercedes-Benz, que eles estavam ainda na garantia. Então nós deslocamos dois caminhões até Varginha para que fizesse a manutenção prevista. Tudo disso aí, no, no, no desenrolar de toda a história, houve uma série de coincidências de fatos. Havia no hospital de Varginha um casal de anões, onde a, a senhora estava grávida para ganhar um neném. A ter colocado no caminhão e levado para o hospital de Varginha, onde o pessoal disse ter... É, tem encontrado um casal de ETs, que na realidade eram dois, era um casal de anões, estavam lá e essas meninas estavam para ter filho. I understand that some of the Brazilian military authorities have said that uh, the whole incident may stem from a, a bizarre misidentification of an actually uh, a, a real case which actually involved a dwarf couple being taken I think to hospital. Now I don't know about that myself, but I mean, uh, speaking from my own experience of, of the military, uh, they are an honourable group of people, and if they say that this took place and that this is the explanation, I think we clearly have to uh, uh, put some store by that. It's possible that a second alien creature may have escaped this crash because several hours after the alleged death of the first alien in the hospital, a second alien creature was spotted hiding in waste ground on the edge of town. Estranha que no momento que a gente passou, 
não olhava pra gente, não. E quando a Kátia gritou, aí que ela olhou pra gente. We asked the girls to tell us what the creature looked like. With the help of an artist, we built up a detailed sketch. Marrom. A, a pele dele parecia ser muito mole, porque o sol estava batendo nele, estava iluminando, parecia ser muito mole, tipo num, tipo num coração, uma coisa assim. Os olhos vermelhos arregalados, as três perseverâncias na cabeça, veia sobre o ombro. Quando ela olhou pra gente assim, ela passou é, que estava se sofrendo, que estava ansiosa, que estava com alguma dor. Não, assim, foi na hora que eu olhei assim, que eu fixei meus olhos na Isso criatura, é foi o jeito, assim, parecia que estava sofrendo. O jeito que ela olhou pra mim. A Kátia e a Liliane saíram correndo. Eu fiquei parada. Aí, ela, aí elas voltaram, me pegou, eu correndo. Embora. They saw what looked like a devil. That comes the story. Because this creature had three, th three things in, in the head that resembled like horns, but weren't horns at all. And it had a brown skin, a brown, like a gray oil all over, and the veins, black, purple veins, were very visible on the upper arm and the neck. The three sisters' description of the creature they saw was remarkably similar to the one given by the soldier in the hospital. The local military commander offered an explanation. Por causa desse temporal cá em Varginha, existe lá um, um senhor anão, ele é anão baixo, ele é bem desfigurado, ele é retardado mentalmente. E por causa dessa chuva ele havia se machucado muito porque não tinha como fugir da chuva e ele estava próximo a esse terreno baldio, onde tá essas duas meninas dizem terem visto essa criança. Porque realmente, se nós olharmos para esse senhor, ele realmente tem uma aparência que nos causa até um certo constrangimento e uma aflição, porque ele tem alguma disformidade física, né? ele tem a pele realmente escura. Mal. Clearly there was something strange there, um, but there are a large number of strange wild animals uh, in Brazil and some of them uh, are certainly not creatures with which uh, Western researchers are familiar. It's a large country and there are all sorts of um, unusual uh, animals there that uh, may indeed cause someone to uh, say, my goodness, what's that? How sure are you that they were telling the truth? Well, for us, they're, they're telling the truth because what they saw there, it's not a dog, it was not a... Uh, because if you try to understand what kind of animal could look like this, you won't find it, although we have many animals in Brazil. But the, the oil all over the body, it was shining. The, the bumps on the top of the head and also the eyes. Okay, we're talking about a humanoid. So when you're confusing with a dog or with a monkey, you could say, well, it could be a monkey, but it's almost impossible because a monkey wouldn't have that correct, uh, those characteristics. One of the other interesting things about the Virginia incident is that if you look at the testimony of the girls who actually saw this uh, creature, they did not use any sort of language uh, indicative of a UFO or an alien event. They actually referred to the creature as, quote, the devil, unquote. And uh, it's, it's very important to realise that um, Witnesses, when they report something like this, will simply um, dredge something up from their own um, belief system, their own knowledge, and, and particularly, importantly, their own cultural background. So what we have here, I think, is clearly an incident where something was seen, but this idea that um, it's necessarily something to do with UFOs and aliens may only have arisen once Western UFO researchers became involved, because that's not what the original witnesses said. Said. A few days later, another eyewitness came forward, an English-speaking lawyer who said she had seen the actual site where the UFO was alleged to have crashed. 
I live about 20 minutes from the center of Virginia, uh, right on the edge of the hills and forests which circles the town. Uh, it was about 2 a.m. and I was asleep when I heard a huge explosion coming from outside. It sounded like a bomb had gone off, a huge explosion. Um, when I looked out the window, uh, I could see this huge mass of fire and smoke coming from the hillside, about one kilometer from my house. I really had no idea what had happened, but obviously it was bad. So I called the fire department immediately in Virginia, uh, but there was no answer, which I thought was strange. But within a few minutes, I could hear their siren, so I guess someone had already let them know. Um, just a few minutes later, I could see, like, three army trucks speeding up in the dirt track, which leads to where the explosions were, um, and then a helicopter. Um, I remember thinking, why, why were the army there? And how did they get to this thing so fast? It only happened less than five or six minutes ago. I kept watching as both the fire department and the army units went right to where the explosion was. But it was way too far for me to see any detail. Uh, I started to think that maybe a military plane or a helicopter crashed. Uh, and that was the explosion I heard. Uh, but I still had no idea what had happened. Uh, I remember that the police and the fire department sealed out the whole area. It was only later in the day when I heard the news about these alien things, these creatures in town, and I realized that that might have well been, probably was, the crash site. The, that's when it all started making sense. I mean, I couldn't see much, just fire and smoke and stuff, but something crashed out there. I can 100% confirm that. A few weeks after the incident, one of the soldiers who was present at the crash site, Marco Eli Sherezi, died from unknown toxic poisoning. His sister, Marta, is convinced he was poisoned through contact with this alien creature and has been fighting to get an independent autopsy on his body. De trabalho na polícia, certo? E fez o trajeto todinho com a criatura, né? Saiu do local, foi até o Hospital Humanitas e depois só deu baixa lá na escala dele por volta de meia-noite, 45. Só que na hora que meu irmão fez o pegou, fez a captura lá, ele podia ter simplesmente encostado, porque certos exames que eu tenho, a cru, acusa que foi contagiado por pele. Não precisava ter nenhuma infecção, nenhum machucado, certo? Então, por isso que realmente houve essa, essa captura, sim. E meu irmão participou, sim, porque meu irmão não tinha nada. Bizarrely, the doctor said that an autopsy wasn't necessary and ordered the body to be buried immediately. The blood tests were made available and showed that his blood contained 8% of unknown toxic substances. Somebody from inside the military police from Virginia told me, I have this tape recorded, that Marco Eli Cherezi was involved in this capture. Somehow he got closer or even touched the creature. And all of a sudden he couldn't move his arms, he couldn't feed himself. He was really bad. They took them, took Mark, Marco Eli Cherezi to the hospital. The doctors didn't say a thing to the family. Uh, a few days later, he died. In fact, a member of the fire brigade, who was also involved at the crash site that night, also died of toxic poisoning. And although the people of Virginia and the media demanded answers, the authorities remain silent. According to our sources, whatever was recovered from the crash site was eventually flown out of the country in an unmarked transport plane within a few days. Destination unknown. And that should have been the end of the so-called incident in Brazil, except that a few weeks later, 
Another alien creature was reported in the town of Virginia, this time at the zoo. An old lady spotted a creature very similar to the one seen by the other witnesses. Eu não vou afirmar que vi o ET. Eu só tinha saído do Nolpenda para fumar. E vi uma coisa muito feia. Os olhos vermelhos, grandes, esbugalhado. E a cor dele era marrom escuro. Era muito feio. Animal não era. Isso eu tenho certeza. What she told us is the creature had some light coming from the eyes because the place was all dark at night. But she could see the face here, a small nose, a little slit as a mouth, only because some light was coming from the eyes of the creature, no pupils. And all of a sudden, the creature was not there anymore. She went inside the place, called her husband and said, listen, we got to get out of here. Of course, no one knows what she saw, or what she thought she saw. But it's interesting that in the days before this sighting, several animals had died suddenly at the zoo from unknown toxic poisoning. Muito estranho que logo após a, a, o aparecimento dessa criatura, nós estávamos com um problema dentro do zoo que em morte de animais que tinham ocorrido desde fevereiro. Tá? Eu perdi cinco animais e, e sem explicação nenhuma científica, porque o laudo técnico diz que morreu de não sei. E não é comum. Eu sou diretora desse zoológico há sete anos e nunca tive um caso desse. So had another alien creature hidden itself away in the zoo? Or did Mrs. Klepf misidentify some other animal? got a lot of witnesses in this case. I don't think that people are making this up. What I do think we have to check out very carefully is the possibility that we are dealing with a, a series of events um, uh, which, which have been, as it were, linked together, perhaps by people who are very keen to come to particular conclusions, and that we're dealing perhaps with nothing more exciting than a series of misidentifications um, and, and people putting perhaps quite extraordinary explanations on events which may be rather mundane. The American journalist and UFO investigator Linda Moulton Howe compiled a detailed report on the incident in Brazil. She's convinced that not only did aliens crash down in Brazil in January 1996, but that both the Brazilian and the United States government deliberately covered it up. They know and have been covering up for at least 50 years that extraterrestrial biological entities are interacting with our planet have access to backyards, to pastures, and to even bedrooms in the human abduction syndrome. Not wanting people to be aware of that because they're afraid of mass panic, I can understand up to a point. But everything in me says life teaches you, knowledge gives you strength, ignorance weakens you. I think the entire planet deserves the truth because whatever the extraterrestrial biological entities are doing, there has to be a reason for uh, a variety of intrusions that have been happening in Mexico and South America in a very aggressive nature. But what is it? That's what we all need to find out. She believes that the Brazilian Roswell has far greater implications beyond Virginia, maybe even provides the key to what aliens want with our planet. Biggest issue for me after two decades that haunts me to this day is what is the motive of extraterrestrial biological entities interacting with this planet. And in any given story, and any given eyewitness, you can find yourself swinging, oh, it must be horrible, oh, it is so good and spiritual, they've healed people. 
But the government is nervous and you find yourself swaying. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it neutral? Is it benign? Is it, what is it? And I've begun to realize that the, probably the most dangerous thing that any of us could do is try to box it in any category because right now I don't know that that's possible, not from a human point of view. My own personal feeling at the year 1997, and that's what it falls into a category because I can't prove any of this. But it's a feeling or a growing sense that the complexity, the, the profound level of complexity of what we are dealing with, a non-human intelligence that appears, as government insiders have told me, a million years in advance in technological achievement than we are, that's incomprehensible. What they're able to do with gravity, with electromagnetic spectra, it's beyond my ability to comprehend or anybody's ability. Intriguingly. against whom we have inadequate defence. What really happened in Virginia is still a mystery. On one hand, there are dozens of reliable witnesses, both civilian and military, who swear blindly that they saw alien creatures that night. There's an eyewitness who saw the crash site in flames. And there's a soldier who claims to have guarded the creature inside the hospital. On the other hand, the Brazilian military and fire department deny anything happened and that the witnesses are just misidentified dwarves. I'm pleased to see that partly because of Roswell as a precedent, that people are taking such an event seriously. Is this 
perhaps, I don't know of any previous cases where beings like this were seen before, maybe this is a new step in what's going on. I think we're, we're just having the biggest opportunity to prove that the main kind had some contact with alien creatures. The Roswell incident is a very important one, but it happened 50 years ago. This is recent. We have a lot of information from military sources, civilian sources. I mean fresh information. So I think this is going to be uh, a very important situation where we can prove that alien beings had really visited our planet. We already know the names of the people involved. We know the details of the operation of capture, of transportation, the creatures, everything. They can't hide much from us. I think one must remember that uh, witnesses are fallible. Um, people make mistakes. People misidentify things, particularly if they see them under unusual conditions. So always, I would say to people, look for the prosaic explanations first. Look for the misidentification of uh, some sort of military exercise going on. Look perhaps for the idea that you might have had some space debris re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, giving rise to quite a, a spectacular display. Uh, consider again the entity report that you might simply be dealing with some wild animal, uh, startled and perhaps again seen by people that weren't particularly used to seeing this sort of creature. Uh, there are many, many things which perhaps individually um, wouldn't have given rise to this great incident, but when perhaps just taken together um, led to an extraordinary series of coincidences which uh, frankly gave us a, a situation where people have got things wrong. Rather than trying to close off and reject, I'm trying to stay as open-minded as I can on what could the motives be. If survival is a key issue and that all of the information is saying our own survival as a species could be tied with whatever these extraterrestrial biological entities are involved with, our discovering what the issue is seems to me to be paramount, and I think that the government of the United States has been working overtime trying to understand that. If survival is the, the big bottom line answer, what is it that the extraterrestrials know that the rest of us don't? The whole attitude about space, about beings from elsewhere, about anybody coming here, uh, has changed drastically. People, senators, congressmen, and the president are fed up with this huge amount of classified, billion and a half pages it's been estimated. One of the good things about the Virginia case is that presumably almost all the witnesses are still alive and will be for some time. So we've got some hope here. If major effort is expended to get more witnesses, especially the insiders, the guys at the hospital, the military guys who grab and so forth, then there's certainly a good chance we can find those people.